This is a 2017 Audi R8 V10 Plus. 10 years ago, when the R8 first came out, there was just a V8 engine, there was no V10, and there was no Plus. And the original R8 had a base price of only $110,000. Right now, this one is available for sale, and its sticker price is almost double that, just a little over $200,000. So today, I'm gonna show you why the R8 has gotten so expensive. I'll start with the most obvious thing, the engine. Now the original R8 V8 back in 2008 had only 420 horsepower, which isn't really all that much by modern standards. This thing has a 5.2 liter V10 with 610 horsepower, which is massive. And trust me, that isn't even close to the only difference. To find out all the other reasons why the R8 has gotten so expensive, I'm gonna show you around this thing. I'm gonna give you a tour and show you all of its cool quirks and weird features. Then I'm gonna get it out on the road and drive it. And finally, I'm gonna give it a Doug score. I should mention that I've borrowed this R8 from Audi Bridgewater here in New Jersey, and they have two brand new R8s currently in stock. They also have a bunch of the newly redesigned SQ5s. Now consider today a huge success if I can walk out of here without impulsively buying one. Now, on to the quirks. I'll start on the outside with the R8's door handles. Now, I praised the old R8 because it hadn't yet succumbed to the industry trend of putting weird door handles on exotic cars. Well, the new R8 has kind of a weird door handle. You'll notice you don't see it when you first look at the car. It's just flush and beautiful. Instead, you have to kind of reach your hand around underneath until you find the door handle and then loop your fingers and then you can open the door. It's not that weird, but it's not exactly normal either. The coolest exterior quirk in this car, maybe the coolest quirk in the entire car, is these turn signals. Take a look at these things. The top part is cool enough just based on its design, but the bottom bit is what's really neat. It sort of lights up in the direction that you're going to let other drivers know exactly where you're turning. This is the coolest turn signal in the car industry right now. One of the other interesting exterior quirks of this car is the trunk. Now, just like in the original, right, the trunk panel is massive. So you open this and you think it's going to be this huge trunk, but then it just it isn't really. It's not all that big, just like in the original, all right. Unlike in the original R8, however, this one has nets in the cargo area. So it looks like kind of a little cargo tennis court going on here. Moving on to the interior, my favorite thing you notice the second you get inside the car is this floating array of climate controls. This is so cool. They look really futuristic, and most importantly, they feel amazing. They're not jiggly at all like you'd expect considering they just kind of dangle there. It's really good design, and it's really well built. Another thing about these climate control buttons, they're not just attractive, they are tremendously intuitive. If you work for a car company as an engineer in the climate control buttons department, take notes. On the left, air conditioning speed. Turn it up for more, turn it down for less. That's easy. In the middle, temperature. Up for more, down for less. And the button on the right directs where the air goes. As you move it, you change where the air comes out. And there's a little diagram there that shows where the air comes out each time you move it. It is brilliant. On the bottom, if you want defrost, off, or the rear defroster, you press those buttons. It's an entire climate control system summarized in three buttons and three switches. So how come in every other car is there so much stuff? They should all be just like this. Next up, let's talk about the steering wheel. Now, every exotic car is trying to get more and more stuff on the steering wheel, so you don't have to take your hands off the wheel. And this one is no exception, but this car has some especially interesting things on its steering wheel. On the right, you have the bright red engine start-stop button. That is to be expected. Less expected is right below it. That's the exhaust button. You want more exhaust? Just push it. It even looks like a little exhaust. On the other side, there's a button with a checkered flag on it. That button initiates launch control. And above that, you have the drive select button, where you can choose between all of the car's drive modes. Of course, there's also the usual smattering of cruise control and infotainment and radio volume buttons. And then at the top, there are the paddles. These days, exotic car steering wheels are getting more and more complicated, and the R8s is no exception. Another interesting feature of this car located right here behind the driver's seat is the hood release button. Now, that might not sound all that interesting, but check this out. You buy a new car, you probably don't have to get under the hood all that often, and it's all under warranty. The dealer does all that stuff for you. But push the hood release button in this car, Look at that, it automatically pops right up. It does not have to do that. Audi could have just made an annoying latch that you have to find like every other car, but pops up automatically. That is really good attention to detail and excellent quality. 
But Audi's attention to detail isn't always perfect. A good example of that in this car is the cup holders. The cup holder situation in this car is something I've never seen before. They're under a lid, and the lid isn't something you can just pull off. It's actually hinged, which means the largest cup you can get in back is only as tall as the lid will actually open. So the other problem is you stick your cups in there, and then <laughs> the, lid, <laughs> the lid is up, and you can't actually use the armrest as an armrest when you're driving along. So you have to choose cup holder or armrest. It's a very weird design. Behind those unusual cup holders, you'll find another one of the R8's strange features. Now, Audi probably understood that their front trunk isn't as big as some rivals, so they added a little storage solution inside the cabin. What it is is a cloth separator between the seats and the back of the car where you can put stuff behind. The weird thing about this particular separator is that it has little zippered pockets for stuff you don't want to move around. It's actually a pretty good solution, although an unusual one in an exotic sports car. But back to Audi's excellent attention to detail. When the car is in park, a little red P appears right here next to the gear selector. But the second you move the car out of park, the P disappears. The whole gear just is gone, so you never have to think about the travesty of parking your R8. It's something small that most people would notice, but I personally think it's kind of cool. When you want to park the car again, you press the P button on the gear selector and the P pops right back up. But the coolest part of this interior is by far the gauge cluster, which is undoubtedly the most advanced gauge cluster in the car industry right now. Now, I know it's used in a lot of modern Audis, but in case you haven't seen it, allow me to walk you through some of the coolest things about it. Let's start with the fact that it's just a giant screen, no gauges and completely configurable. You want your tachometer to take up most of it? That's fine. You want your phone contacts and call info? That's fine too. But check out the coolest part. This giant 3D map literally shows you where you are and it's oriented in the direction you're pointing. Look up, that's where you are. Look down, that's where you are too. You can also adjust that center display screen down here with these buttons in the center console. Maybe the coolest part is the typing feature. Want to tell the navigation system to take you somewhere? You don't need to mess with scrolling through a keyboard or trying to get it to recognize your voice. Just use this thing down here to type what you want. It's amazingly easy. This is a feature only a few navigation systems have right now, but they will all have it soon. Even deleting is intuitive. Just swipe your hand back and it deletes the last character you typed. Between that and the display located right below your line of sight, this is probably the first navigation system that's easier to use than just plugging the destination into your phone. So the R8 has a surprising amount of cool features and weird quirks, and now it's time to get it out on the road and drive it. For more of my R8 experience, click the link below to go to autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've got a column with more of my thoughts on the R8, and I've got a list of the cheapest V10 powered cars currently listed for sale on Autotrader. is just the coolest thing. Uh, all the new Audis have this, so this isn't that amazing for just the R8, but if you haven't seen this yet, this is the, <laughs> this is so cool. Uh, I'm looking at the road we're traveling in the direction we're traveling in. This has gotta be what, a six inch screen or something like that? And it's completely color. And there's, you know, my speedo and my tack are still there. Uh, it's not even distracting really. It's more distracting when you're down here fiddling with this stuff. This is so cool. fast shifts in this car. As fast as, I mean, it's not possible to get faster than this. I love the sound. I just drove a V8 R8, which I love because it's such a pure car and it's not that powerful and all that, but uh, it doesn't have, it's not this crazy. This thing is a monster. This car is also so far more technically advanced than the first generation R8 that it's crazy. You can just tell instantly. It's more futuristic with these little air conditioning controls in the center and the gauge cluster. Everything just seems like it's on, an, on the next level. It doesn't have the same feeling of coolness that the R8 first had when it came out back in 08, where it was like, oh my God, what is that? That's an Audi. Now everybody's kind of familiarized themselves with the design, but sitting inside it, I feel even cooler than that with this cockpit thing. It's un unbelievable how cool this is. All right, back to, now we got some space. Okay, let's drive this thing. Oh. Wow. Oh my God. Oh my God. Well, that's, that's pretty quick. <sighs> oh, it's so flat around the corner. Oh, the steering is so much more precise than LFA. It's so precise. 
I don't think it's quite as precise as Huracan, believe it or not. I think that the Huracan is just a little bit more, has better turn in, but still, this thing is unreal. It's amazing in the corners, dead flat. This is one of the best. This is absolutely one of the best. Huracan, when you turn the wheel, like no car I've ever driven, it's just boom. It's like those those spaceships and in into the Independence Day movies. Like you turn, uh, and this car is damn close. Obviously, I mean this is up there with all the best, the 48 and everything like that. But I just think they're just the slightest little bit off. Huracan was just so incredible in that respect. Okay, let's give it a shot here. My God, wow, that is wild. What is this car? That is crazy. That is crazy, crazy speed. Wow. I'll tell you, that was some of the sharpest acceleration I've ever felt. Now I have to admit, I cheated and looked up this car zero to 60 before I came here. And I know that this car is actually one of the quickest cars ever sold. This car does zero to 60 in something like 2.9, 2.8 seconds, which is up there with, I mean, that's quicker than 488. Partially, I presume, because it has an all-wheel drive start. There's no roller coaster I've ever been on that felt like that. There's no, I've, the feeling you get initially when you first do that and when the, this like feeling and speed washes over you, I don't know that like my body has ever gone, ah. <laughs> wow, that was massively fast. <laughs> I mean, I'm spoiled because I've driven all these cars and that's true in all of them, but just FYI, this one is on that level. It's just like the 48 and all that stuff, which, you know, 10 years ago when the R8 came out, you didn't say that about it. You said, oh, that is a 911 turbo competitor. Now this car is squarely a Ferrari 48 Huracan competitor on that level. And so that's the 2017 Audi R8 V10 Plus. No, at $200,000, it isn't as affordable as the original model, but it has something like 50% more horsepower than the original R8. And it now does zero to 60 in like three seconds or less with that crazy launch control. It's like the little sports car that grew up and went through school and has emerged a full-fledged exotic supercar. And now time to give it a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the R8 V10 Plus is an attractive car, certainly in the upper echelons, but not one of the all-time greats. It gets an 8 out of 10. In terms of acceleration, the R8 V10 Plus does 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds, and it's probably the fastest car I've ever driven. It gets and earns a 10 out of 10. Handling is great, excellent, sharp, nearly at the very top, but not quite there. It gets an 8 out of 10. Cool factor is strong, but the R8 has become familiar, and nobody except the biggest car geeks know you got the V10 Plus version. It gets a 7 out of 10. Finally, importance, which measures the car's significance. It's more important than an average car, but these are certainly more mass-produced than most exotics. It gets a 7 out of 10, bringing its total weekend score to an impressive 40 out of 50. Not the very top, but not far behind. Next up are the daily categories starting with features where the R8 is truly innovative. I love the climate controls but I really love the Audi virtual cockpit which gives Tesla a run for its money. It gets a hard to achieve 9 out of 10. It's the best car in this class. Luxury measures comfort and the R8 is reasonably comfortable but it's still an exotic sports car and it feels like it. It's even a bit rougher than its predecessor. It gets a 5 out of 10. Quality measures materials and reliability. Reliability is too early to tell but Audi has been improving recently. Materials are excellent in nearly every area Area and it earns an 8 out of 10. Practicality is hindered by the small trunk. The R8's 8 cubic feet would normally give it a 3, but poor fuel economy and only 2 seats knock that number down to a 2 out of 10. Finally, there's value. The R8 is really expensive at over $200,000, but think of it this way. It's far cheaper than a Huracan and almost laughably cheaper than a 488. It accelerates faster than both those cars and it has better tech and it handles nearly as well. That would give it a great score, but let's not forget it still is over $200,000 and that brings it down to a 7 out of 10, giving it a total daily score of 31 out of 50. Add those scores together and you'll get a total Doug score of 71. That makes the R8 V10 Plus, the new Doug Score champion, and it deserves it. Comfortable and daily drivable with amazing technology, but also supercar performance. It's an awesome vehicle.